Well, hello there, my delicious friends. Welcome back for another chill out session with the Sketchpad. Draw with Mikey on Wednesday, the 25th Mass Eve. Now, um, you guys obviously watching this midweek, I'm recording this on a Tuesday, the day before. And that leads straight into our first comment from last episode. Norwegian Brit says, Shit, well then, I don't know if you saw my comments from the last episode, but now that you know that I commented last episode. Okay, brilliant, you did. Nice one, dude. Um, it's a bit far back now to check it out, but basically, I'm assuming you commented after a Sunday when I actually got the recording done. And I was going to try to get this episode as well recorded on a Sunday, but I'm so shit at timekeeping, getting things done, but simply it didn't happen. So we're really close to Wednesday again. Hello, everybody at home. This is a series where you get to get on with your own lives and maybe just leave this in the background, do your own art homework, work on your own art projects, and I'm going to work on mine. So yeah. Oh, and by the way, just a quick disclaimer this episode. I'm very fucking annoyed. We need to talk about this really quickly. I've just been playing about an hour and a half of Dark Souls 3 again, trying to um, get part 3 set to upload on Thursday. And that game is a fucking arsehole. Okay, that's all I want to say there. That game's not cool in my book. Absolute dickloosh. So, what's going on? I thought in a sketchbook today, and hopefully this time I've managed to actually get the audio recording sorted so it's going through my nice new microphone instead of through the camera phone. I thought what I wanted to do is just have a play around with the character Tracer from Overwatch. Um, because I'd never heard of it before, because I'm never up to date, and a lot of you people would start requesting Tracer for the next SAS. And seeing as it's relatively, like, modern, it's actually coming out now as opposed to characters from an anime series I happen to have watched about 20 years ago, it seems like a nice opportunity to take a look. So I had a look at these... Um, like some Overwatch animated intros or something, like some character arc clips on the Tube Del Ube, obviously, where you are now, welcome. And uh, she's kind of cool, she's like a, a sprightly, funky, British um, monkey, is basically the best way I can think of describing her. She kind of time teleports all over the place and has a lot of fun. She's a really like low-hitting, low-power character who's very quick and can kind of zoom out i don't know if she's a support role or anything like that because i don't really play team gun games that much i'm just not very good at them any kind of gun game where you have to go online to play against other strangers is where i just get fucked over as a noob every single time so i don't stay in them that long even old star wars battlefront one of a few games i legally ended up purchasing and downloading i just didn't play it that long after a while because i just getting, kept getting fucked over by people with better blasters so you know screw you society whatever i'll live my own life i don't feel sad for me at all Okay, so anyway, Tracer, she's always like, Oh, the cavalry's here! All right, love! Yee! I'm Brit! I'm a British person! <laughs> it's obviously like, who made this? Is it Blizzard Entertainment? Are any of them British? Have they met a British person? I don't know. Oh, crikey, Gov! Oh, get some more flowers for the Queen! I met her yesterday! Oh, apple and pears! Um, hang on, I'm going to stop doing that now. But basically, that's how they kind of seem to summarise uh, Tracer's voice in all the cutscenes I saw. I'm sure she's really cool. I'm sure the game... It's amazing seeing as Blizzard, they know what they're doing these days. So yeah, anyway, let's continue on with your comments. Joshua Kim says second. Well done, Joshua. Roman Miser says two or three times a week. Then you get me, I live... Oh yeah, then you get me, I live... Uh, most of the people are addicted to Facebook, Snapchat, and then there's me. So we're kind of talking about how often I think you're on Facebook or getting art done or something. I forget the questions we had last episode because I'm not a very organised person. But then Roman goes on to say... Oh, guess what now? Fucking year 10 have to do their GCSE science. <laughs> Not in year 11, but a fucking year early. <laughs> Bad luck, bruv. <laughs> Bad fucking luck. I've done my P1, tomorrow's a C1, and then there's physics a week later, and fuck, most of my year's not ready. Oh, mate, you're fucked. Fuck, fuck being a kid these days. Uh, good luck, dude. Um, All the best with your GCSEs. That's some important shit. Physics is awesome. I took triple science back when I was a youngling. I don't know... If they have that option or if education even works in the same way. But basically, if you did double science, it kind of mixed your chemistry and physics and biology all into kind of two particular courses. And if you did triple science, you got it split back into three. So if you really loved physics like I did, but was really shit at chemistry and biology like I was, then you could separate them out so it didn't drag your marks down. But it also meant you had to hang out with the geek crew, who are a great crowd. But it actually meant you had to go to school for like an extra couple hours a week to do extra lessons. Oh, man. Took me a long, long time before I realised I literally didn't have to stay. They couldn't physically make me. And by then it was too late. Most of my life had been wasted. So anyway, Tracer's not like an anime character. She's more like a, um, kind of like a Disney character. Basically she's more of a Western cartoon type. So she has 
lot of these Western cartoony type tropes, which I will try to retain when it comes to the SAS. But I basically thought, because I'm not used to this character type at all, what's really going on with all this gubbins, I just need to loosen up and have a few goes at kind of understanding the hair and the shapes and bits in the sketchbook. As ever, these are never going to be prize winners. This is just my opportunity to get a bit of practice in and also make another episode of DWM. Good times, my friends. Good times. What are you guys saying? Bajeri Hamidani. Hello there. Awesome drawings. Thanks for your efforts. Oh, thank you very much. You're a really good artist. Cheers. Can you make a tutorial about drawing a famous girl turnaround, you know, from front, side, back or so? That would be complete your How to Draw Body series. That's a very good idea. I actually know exactly what you mean when you see like a gallery of character art and then it's like the same slightly top down angle, maybe. And the character just rotates round. Yeah, so I will definitely actually have to do that. That is a very good idea because it's going to help with proportions and proportions at different angles and different shapes. So that kind of falls into a lot of what we were discussing. Now, I think the upcoming tutorial plans I've got in mind, I guess I could actually do that. It doesn't really matter what order I do them in as long as I get them all done eventually. But I wanted to um, start playing around with perspective and things like that because I get loads and loads of perspective requests that I've still not managed to quite to fulfill just as of yet. So anyway, she's got this spiky hair and it kind of comes out and it kind of comes round, kind of, kind of goes down. It's like as if somebody was trying to draw a cloud and then they fucked it up. So they colored it in brown and then turned it into a woman. That was how I would describe this character. But Cloud already is a woman. Yeah, we know. Okay, spoiler alert. Let's just get this up in here. Yeah, that's what happened in Final Fantasy VII, by the way. Also in my Let's Play series we're doing now. Cloud Strife, you think he was a member of Soldier, but all along he was a girl. And that's what made it the greatest game ever made. Let's just... What is this clip? She's got some weird clip backpack kind of thing. And she's ex-Air Force or something. She was involved in a time dilation accident. Or something really, really weird. Okay. And then she's anchored using technology that a monkey built. I'm not even making that up. I'm pretty sure that's the plot of um, Tracer's history. She's kind of stuck in time and her best friend's a monkey. And then I don't even know what the Overwatch crew is or what it's about. But they were like guardians of the galaxy almost. A really weird group of people fighting terrorism or something. Or just evil in general. I do not, do not know. Haven't learnt, basically, but I will have to do it because I don't like doing an SAS um, image just straight off the bat anymore. I like to, if it's an anime, I'll try to watch the first two or three episodes if I don't know who the character is. And if it's a game, I'll try to watch lots of footage online because I'd like to um, have a bit of an idea of who the characters are, like their personality types, because that helps a lot with what kind of pose or what kind of action or backstory they've kind of got when you're drawing an image. So anyway, that's all a bit blur, but who cares? Let's look at something a bit more particular. I've looked at a Google image of her guns. I need to get these bad boys down, that's for sure. And what's going on in El Comentos? Yves George Sanchez says, Wendy's a girl with a Wind Dragon Slayer magic. Thank you for the knowledge, sir. And DeAndre Connor says, well done, Mikey. I don't know what for. Maybe for just being alive? Cheers, DeAndre, and well done for being you. You be you, and I'll be me. So Weebo Frisch says, it's... Weebo, not Weebo. Weebo. Wait, what? Oh, Weebos. Oh, whatever. Yeah, like when you're Western, but you love Japanese culture so much, you're like the worst possible parts of it, and you think you might be Japanese. But get over it. You know what? Japanese people look at Western people, and they fucking hate you. Yeah, I said it. No, I'm kidding. Most of them are really nice. But um, if you try to just fucking like force someone else's culture onto yourself, and I'm not talking about like when white chilled out guys have dreadlocks. I don't think that's misappropriation of culture. I think you just need to fucking get over your own history i mean like um just when you just see loads of kids with their fucking nintendo ds's just doing loads of japanesey stuff and because i quite like a lot of japanese stuff but i'm also very aware of just how gross this kind of thing is i just think fucking hell you guys <laughs> fucking hell anyway so so this gun's got a weird shape and then it's got like a a thing i don't know if the guns have time powers as well time bullets but there's lots of like blue discharge energy doctor i'm getting that blue discharge again yes you need to take the medicine more often and then it's got like these weird ammo clips and they spin around or something oh so in the footage maybe i get it maybe she spins around her guns and sends them back in time so they have more ammo like they did before she shot the gun is that what they're doing that'd be fucking cool or have i just made up something that's even better than what was in the game who knows okay i'm just gonna get this curve down here this is like, this is the worst thing to do whilst talking. When you're trying to understand the shape and form of something, it's really nice to 
chill out, maybe put some music on in the background and just focus solely on your drawing ability to get uh, the shape down. But instead, I'm trying to talk, so I'm really roughly getting some shapes of this gun and understanding some bits, but not really, not really achieving uh, either particularly well. Not really talking, not really drawing, which, to be fair, has long since been a staple of this series. What did he do? Did he draw? Uh, not really, not well. Did he talk? Uh, not really, not well. Why did you watch it? I don't know, I just feel kind of sorry for the guy. I've been subscribed to his channel for so long. Ah, oh, Celevi. So, Hotaru Wannabal says, I keep forgetting to mention, but I'm a verbose son of a bitch, so I'll put a TLDR version. Wait, a time limit direct? Wait, I don't even know. Fuck, I don't even know what that means. How do I? I can't deal with this. After all my comments, so you don't have to read an essay on the spot. Okay, brilliant. So you're going to summarize. You have written a lot. Let's have a sip of tea. Mmm. Delicious. Everybody, get yourself a cup of the good stuff. Are you cool with using emulators? I've used them on my phone before. Um, because basically Shin Megami Tensei needs an emulator by the sound of it. And Persona and all those other bits. So, pirate the fuck out of Persona 1, 2 and 3. Play a real Shin Megumi Tensei game. <laughs> Brilliant. I like this TLDR stuff. That is very good. Um, Persona 3. Yeah, so I'm tempted actually. Just because I want to play a really Japanese-y game just for the fun of it. He says after talking about Weirbos for 5 minutes. Let's... Just get this gun shape down here. It's got like a a notch or something here, and then it kind of comes down around about here. There's lots of interesting shapes going into this design, but I've fucked it already, and I've got it all crunched up. But that is absolutely fine, because I'll simply do it again. This is what the sketchbook practice is all about. So that was a shit one. Let's get a better one. Let's start with a weird circle thing in the middle, and then there's a space off to the right. And it comes down and then arcs up. It comes out a fair whack to about here in this arc. Better already. And then this comes in, drops down a segment and goes across there. So that's one section. The other white section goes up and here. Basically, is this whole particular unit that sticks out quite a fair whack backwards, in fact, around about here. It's got a down zone, an up zone, and a back in zone like so. This becomes a trigger area. It's a weird sticking out hair trigger. It's like the trigger to a video game console more than a gun. And then kind of comes back and out like that. Arcs back round up and into this shape here. And then there's some stuff and team that goes down on the out here. Up round here and here. The trigger's a weird two-stage piece of material bar. Comes down on that side bar, and then comes back up round for here. Okay, so that's slightly better dimensions of gunning. Ignore all that awfulness, but we're kind of getting used to the shape of it, just because I'm probably going to have a few different goes at drawing it for the SAS. Oh yeah, and um, I kind of changed the SAS style last time. I separated out the skin layer to the clove layer on paper, as you might do when you're working in Photoshop, just to see how that worked. I quite enjoyed it. It wasn't the easiest thing in the world. Um, but it's still a million times quicker than trying to draw your line work on Photoshop without a touchscreen tablet. Doing line work in Photoshop with a standard non-touchscreen is an absolute fucking nightmare. I always have a little go at it just to double check. And every time I'm reminded how awful it is. But I talk about that to be fair on the Patreon stuff when I do all those editors commentary SAS videos instead. So let's get that down there. I like this area because it's black and it's dark and all the top part of the actual gun area is in white and it's got little screw holes far and far anyway back to your comments brandon flores awesome mikey quick question cheers go ahead which final fantasy game should i start playing so i can understand the story oh brandon <laughs> oh brandon if, if that shit does not work like that mate every final fantasy title unless it's a direct sequel is a complete world onto its own and although there are some similarities and character run throughs they often have their different fighting styles as well and different rules and mechanics and physics. So, yeah, it's a completely different thing. I mean, if you wanted to start anywhere, I'd have to recommend Final Fantasy VII. That is one of the best Final Fantasies for it to be your first introduction. Um, but if that's a bit too dated for you and want to play a newer game, then I'd probably recommend Final Fantasy X, actually, because... Um, don't hold me to this. I can't rate them in order in just a few minutes because there's so many powerful games. But I think 
Like, Final Fantasy VII is where the, the shit's at. It's one of the best ones ever made, no doubt. Um, and then Final Fantasy VIII is really great. If you imagine VII's this kind of dystopia, VIII's a utopia, but in the middle of a war. Um, and nine's a real good throwback to six and other old schoolers. But I would say for the most modern version, but I, I think you should start with, it's probably Final Fantasy X. It has all the tropes of a great Final Fantasy game, exciting characters, real great colour, a really interesting plot that starts to become more valuable as you get later into the game. And it's just not as old as seven. It's also really visually intriguing. So yeah, ten. Wow. Who'd have thought I would have loved ten? Oh, and a really weird thing. Final Fantasy X, right? So basically, my mate had a PS2. This is years and years ago. And he went on holiday. He basically did something fucking awesome. I can't even remember what it was. I think he went traveling around South America. And I didn't come because I was an idiot. So he lent me his PlayStation 2 with Final Fantasy X. And he was gone for two weeks. Oh, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe he had a different holiday. But anyway, he was gone for exactly two weeks. So I had two weeks to beat Final Fantasy X from start to scratch. And it was during holiday. So I didn't go to school. I just played it for like at least 10 hours a day solid often often more just trying to get through and he came back to pick it up when i was on the final fucking bosses when i was fighting the espers on the giant sword unbelievable ah oh, so close yet so far so i've officially never completed it i've played that game right up until the very end boss but technically never won so yeah maybe i need to actually play that again as well such a good one as well Okay, great question, Brandon, um, which I will talk about forever because it's Final Fantasy related. But let's move on. Orian Samaj. Hello, I'm such a huge fan of Noel Vermillion from Blaz Blue. I will have to look her up. I don't overly know that character. Oh, Brandon further adds, when you ink a drawing of yours, do you see it differently than it was on pencil? Yeah, totally. Like, um, learning to ink confidently, that takes some real balls after a while because when you do your pencil art, it's still kind of pristine unfinished you've not set it in stone you've still got so many options left in life and then when you ink it you set it in but it becomes so much more dynamic and darkened that's why i try to ink a lot now naturally when i'm just doing sketches as opposed to pencil sketches if i'm doing a final i'll still definitely pencil it out first and so on but yeah absolutely i think it has completely different qualities what about you guys at home a lot of you are loving your art and stuff what's your favorite medium do you like watercolor do you prefer pencil do you like using pen? Do you only have pens because you can't afford other bits? Stuff is expensive in life. Let me know because, um, yeah, I used to love the pencil. I love the non-committal, slowly building up a line again and again and again until I was satisfied. And then I realized that was just making me weak. So I had to dive in and start using a pen just so I was committing permanent lines to paper without worrying too much. And that's part of why I got used to working very loosely or at least very badly without killing myself in uh, the sketchbook all the time. So, yeah, good question, sir. Okay, and then it's got these kind of like air holes and that little real bit. Yeah, it's kind of it. So this is all dark round here. Just give it some lines because we like putting some single line hatching into stuff. And then the whole rest of that zone is pretty dark as well. Okay, so let's just put some lines in here to indicate that's both curved and silver like such. Okay, and Shiver says, just finished watching another 50 minutes video. Oh, yeah. Last episode was really long. I'm going to try to. Oh, let's check how we're doing for time. Oh, God. Sigh. It's always, always happens. Like every time. I don't even know why I'm surprised. I think I've talked for about five minutes and then I check and we're already like threatening to have a really long episode again and again and again. So, yeah, it was a 50 minute last time around. I'm going to try to be a bit quicker. Um, Jacob Turniak. Hello, sir. I love that you actually read people's comments. Yes, I do. Ever watched Outlaw Star? Yeah. Yeah, I have actually. Probably my favourite anime, and the reason is I like cat girls. Shamelessly asking you to draw Aisha from Clagland. Yes. Um, yeah, you know what? Really weirdly, I watched Outlaw Star um, years before I ever came across... Um, oh, fuck. I want to say Trigun, because it's got a really similar feeling about it. You know the other one, which um, Keanu Reeves kept wanting to act in, and then they kept nearly making a film, and then it never went through. Oh, fuck. What's that anime called? oh yeah it's got a jazz song what i'm doing i'm not having a breakdown by the way i'm trying to remember the name by singing the song it's like three two one let's go okay you get the idea oh fuck i'm just gonna have to look it up um get in the comments let me know what it is i will try to look it up before this episode's out 
But yeah, anyway, I watched Outlaw Star before I watched that. So yeah, Outlaw Star was really cool as well. It wasn't quite as great as... God, the one that's not Trigun. I've got a proper mental block. It's going to drive me nuts. But yeah, no, I do know it and I do like it. And yeah, um, quite good character designs. Didn't they have like a biogenetically engineered girl that had to kind of synchronize with the ship to make them fly or something? Oh yeah, and then the ships had this weird mech combat. They had arms out the front. So they'd fire at each other in space. And if they got too close, then they'd break up into hand-to-hand -hand combat. That was always pretty cool. Um, seeing as Gundam, they were just actual robot-shaped things. But with Outlaw Star, they were ship-shaped things. ship shape. Very, very good. What I'm doing is I'm having a little click around at different um, images that I've seen of Tracer. And I guess we're just going to have to play with a few of these. Whilst I read your comments, Chris Royalty Jr. says, Draw Jonathan Joestar. Jonathan Joestar. Fucking, you know, I I never heard of this anime before. Like, I'd never even got if it was good or if it was bad or if it was taking a piss out of its stuff. Um, But yeah, like, um, Jonathan Joestar and... Dio Brando, if you guys know what anime, I'm not even going to name it. If you know what I'm talking about, get involved. But yeah, like, I love that. And their names, he goes, he goes to the mean streets of London and fights a gangster from the underworld called Speedwagon. <laughs> Speedwagon. And Speedwagon, like Jonathan Joestar, his heart is so pure of gold that he takes a hit from Speedwagon's attack and doesn't, uh, doesn't like, murder any of his men. And Speedwagon's just like, this is what it is to be a true man. I will follow him. Oh man, so good. Yeah, so, oh no, I'll tell you, it's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Like, if you've not seen it, give it a look, because the animation's really top-notch, but um, it's like from the Fist of an All-Star days of anime, so like the 80s, where everything's really epic and weird and just has this really particular vibe about it, but it really makes for entertaining viewing, as long as you don't take it too seriously. Um, I think you really might like it, whoever you are. You people at home, give it a look. Oh, I've put a nose two sideways already. Disgusting. I hate myself. Let's get some big old eyes in here. Do what it do. And then... How does this hair go? So she's kind of like... Down... Am I running out of ink in this unibal pen? Who knows? Might be. So this kind of goes down like there. And the hair goes off and out. I am. It's really lost its flow. Oh, that is a shame. We're going to have to get another one. Then kind of down there. And then out. Hmm, how big's too big? This might be... I think she needs a haircut already. And then off round there. Yeah, here's a pro tip, everybody. If you need to draw a character's hair to figure out how it goes, don't draw the character's head with the top of head right at the edge of a page. Because then if you try to draw the hair on, you've actually run out of paper. What a dickhead. Unbelievable. At least I'm making these mistakes so you don't have to at home. I'm trying to make art and your world a better place. Ugh, okay, so yeah, I'm just going to have to own another bit of space on this paper and start again. Let's get rid of that image though and just look at some of these oh this is a really cool picture of her as a character let's use this and it's got some guns involved whilst you guys at home are saying colby senior you don't recall you must be educated see mate sweet tea especially here in texas is so good i don't think there's much to it you must be some regular lipton tea mix and sugar i'm sure you can find a recipe but yeah it's good oh yeah iced tea chat i don't know about that mate in the UK, iced tea is when you make a cup of tea, but you're busy and you forget. And then you find the tea later when it's cold. And you have a little lament inside your heart. And then you have to drink it. That's what cold tea is around here. Mighty Pie, do a let's play of Undertale or I'll fight you, brah. Come at me, brah. Fucking do it. I don't fucking care. I've got nothing to live for. Uh, yeah, I might play that. I hear it's like an RPG. Because I know it's a real, like a real indie game. You hear indie games or the title about thrown around a lot these days. But I hear Undertale's like a real indie RPG where it's got terrible graphics but really interesting skeleton characters or something. So yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe someday. Hmm. Let's just get this in and let's get that round. And then great big eye. So she's got big old eyes. She's got like Disney Pixar eyes in a lot of the um, images I'm seeing around here. So I'm going to hope to retain that. But this... Actually, let's not even worry about the detail. This is about a bit more exciting picture. So let's get real scratchy of a pen. It's all action-y, there's hair that's coming off in these big cloudy, like cloud strife triangle shapes, as usual. It's kind of like she's a character from that weird crossover game that has Final Fantasy characters, and then some kid with a key, and then Mickey Mouse, and then you have to buy, like, figurines and stick them in your computer or something. You know what I'm talking about, that weird fucking thing. Okay, so she's like that, and then she's got, like, this 
British RAF bomber jacket, and then there's a boob out here, but she's all wrapped up in this like harness thing, and then the front of the harness is some weird generator that gives off time energy. I don't know what I'm talking about. And then she kind of comes around here. Shoulder epaulets. Arm is foreshortened up here. And then boom, we've got some weird spinning time dilation stuff coming out the side of this gun. Front of the gun is all up around here. Yeah, don't be scared to get scratchy, by the way, when you're just getting your ideas out on paper. Good ways to go. So the gun's up there, and then it's got double iron sights at the front end. Then it's got that big kind of black curve zone that we've been talking about earlier on this model. Down there, goes down low. And then you kind of get a bit of a thumb in there. You can see the trigger fingers up here. And the rest of the fingers are down like so. Cute, I guess. Pretty cute. And then these yellow things. What is this? Like a jetpack? I need to look at some diagrams of her setup before I try to actually get a good drawing in. And then that hand's kind of going off there. And the other gun's kind of going off in that direction far. Around and out. And then she's kind of in a leaping pose. So she kind of reminds me, not visually at all, but as a character to draw. Like Mikasa Ackerman from Attack on Title. <laughs> Attack on Title. Yeah, that's the one. Attack on Titan, I should say. Sorry, guys. I'm absolutely brain fried. So I think, yeah, what, what I mean is that you can kind of draw her in any weird pose. And it just becomes like an action pose where she's flying through the air. Like on Attack on Titan characters, you could draw them in almost any position. And as long as you put the um, weird wiry harnesses on them and made their hair go like super sideways, and it just looks like a, an action pose. It's always really good. So she's kind of like that. And she's got great pins, this character. She's not chesty. She hasn't got like a, a big round bum or anything like that. It's all about the legs. I mean, it's not. She's a human being. Well, she's not. She's a design character. But the character she's designed to be is a human being with personality and attributes. I know that she's not like you know, a sexy character. She's not put in the game just to be a sex object. She's a real, like, fun type of character, apparently. And I heard something like they gave her a pose in the menu selection screen where she shows off her bum, and then it got loads of complaints from the fans because that's not what she's about. So, yeah, empowerment, finally, or equality, or neither, because, you know, empowerment's just a dream and a myth, and equality's still a myth. But we're getting closer, so c'est la vie. Women and men, they aren't equal, I've said it, but men are getting better, we're getting closer. We're almost there. Okay, let's just get some darkness to that car there. Let's not worry about it. And Luke says, 50 minutes draw of Mikey. I actually fucking love this series. Fucking love you too, Luke. You've said that like five or six times in the comments section. What's the matter, brah? Web page wasn't lowing. Kept, cl kept clicking, kept typing. It happens to the best of us. John Cassell says, my comment wasn't read. Still love your work. Unsmiley face. Yeah, sorry, dude. You must have... um." Perhaps commented, I assume, after Sunday when I've recorded the last episode. Um, but I see you now, man. Just repeat your comment if it's something useful in the uh, next episode. And we'll um, crack on from there. Della Rosa Art, those are amazing characters. Cheers, bro. Makeby Dabney says, um, you've been sub more than a year. Awesome. Thanks for staying around. And Two Love Roo is an anime that I should watch and also get into for SAS ideas. Thank you for the suggestion. Disco Legend says, I named a giant monkey after you. Monkey Mega Mega. Oh, cheers. And Batman says, could you do a tutorial on poses like sitting and running? Yes, I can. And yes, I will. Let's have a sip of tea. Mmm. That is some sweet ass tea. So deliciosa. So let's keep looking at weird images. Oh, yeah. So this isn't quite the official pose, but this is somebody else's artwork I've just seen. that kind of summarizes this weird standing thing she's done. But then they make her spikier and shorter with the haircuts kind of like that and then like that and then like that and then kind of down and out and around and off down the side then she's got these big kind of orangey yellow goggles orangey yellow is like her theme color for this which is pretty cool but the reason i like this pose is because um as well as a big jacket collar it's facing away so i can actually have a look at whatever's going on in this backpack so there's like a thing here. There's these big air intake kind of nozzles down there. So I'm assuming this thing overheats or something or needs to recharge. So that's cool. And then there's the main gubbins. I'm assuming this is part of the time gubbins it does. It sort of locks her temporally in place. There's kind of blue special effects that kind of come around here. And then 
goes off to the side. I still don't massively understand it. It's nice seeing it from a different angle. Some other artist has done so I can get a feel for the shape. Anyway, out with the shoulders like so, like so. Great big roll ups on this raft jacket. And then she's got these. What the hell is going on here? Do her forearms? They've got these things sticking on them. Like they look like gun holsters. Is this where she keeps her guns? Like in her forearms? That seems like a really inconvenient place to actually then get them out in a hurry. But you know, character design. It's a cool thing, isn't it? You can just come up with whatever you want. I've said this before. I'm going to go into a little emotion rant again. That's what I fucking love about drawing. Like any kind of design. It could be fucking stupid. But if you can think of it, you can probably draw it. That's for magic. Like any idea like that comes up, just fucking put it on paper and just get it out of your head. It's drawing's awesome. Drawing's so cool, you guys. But I guess you mostly agree if you like that sort of thing. Okay. So something like that. Maybe that gun's way too big for her. But who cares? And then down on this side, that sleeve's also tucked up and in. That arm's also along there. And then... Oh god, you know what? I could never wear these. These would be really annoying. Like, every time you reach for something, like, you just knock over a cup or a pen. Every time you went to just reach for something at desk level, you'd catch it. And every time you went to, like, maybe stroke back someone's hair, you'd smack them in the face with a bit sticking off. Why is she wearing these? Oh, traitor, I thought you were cool. Now I just think you're an idiot who's never going to have a cup of tea without knocking it all over your mates. Unsociable, clumsy tracer. No one likes her. What a shame. She could have been a cool girl. Too late now. Okay, and then, anyway, so off of this jacket bit. Then we've got some hips in, so it comes up and round. There's a bum there. The bum cheek there. And then legs go down and off round var. So something like so. Get that leg somewhere down around about var. And then this leg's going to just be kind of coming off bar and then down var like char and then it's kind of got these strap bits again that kind of come round. i don't know what these straps are for i really yeah i really need to take a good solid look at this character's design whilst not doing a draw of mikey so that i can really um focus on it more than anything but yeah kind of get the vague idea what are you guys saying huzzy bear says hiya mikey hiya huzzy have you ever tried to draw a manga page or a whole manga story? Just wondering, I'm currently drawing a manga and sharing it with my friend at school. Very cool. Keep it up, dude. I'd love to see it. Post it online if you can. And do you listen to rap? If you do, what kind of rap? Please say old school. Hmm. Not like 80s old school, to be honest. I don't listen to like Grandmaster Flash or anything like that. But I love like old Eminem. Like, oh man, Eminem's... You can't fucking deny it. He's probably the best rapper in the world. It's, it's, it's true. He's white and he's probably the best. So I love a bit of old school Eminem. Absolutely got time for that. I do like um, Noriaga and Nas. And um, let's try to think. Thank God's Favourite as well. That's quite a good album. And like, all the really aggressive stuff about like shooting pimps and hoes. Sometimes you just really fucking get into it. It's really, really good. Or Jay-Z as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah, I'm not even going to. I'm not going to start rapping through these episodes. But yes, I do like a lot of rap. What's your favourite? All you guys at home, what's your favourite medium? That's what we asked. What's your favourite rap, if you and or like it? Robert Garcia, Wendy is the Sky Dragon Slayer. Earth to Scarlet is my favourite character. Good on you and thanks for the heads up. And Udsway says, more muscular girls, please. And those armours are just sick. Charles. Charles, mate. Uh, Huin Huemora or Shaowin Huemora. Can you show us how to draw fight scenes? Eventually I will. Tutorial to come. Yo me says 10 years. We'll be able to do this after 10 years? Maybe. Who knows? I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. Um, something we said in the last episode, I'm sure. Drink of tea. Mmm. Delicious. Somebody a while ago said I should have little um, bits of music in to cover the awkward silences when I drink tea. But I don't think they're awkward. We're just allowed to sit here in friendly, amicable silence. That's okay. That would be a fucking awful episode, though. If I didn't draw anything and I just drank tea. And it was just a blank page for 50 minutes. And then I uploaded that. And I just said, yeah, it's fine because we're friends. That would be a real sellout. Don't ever let me do that. Chase Lewis says, found your channel recently and subscribed. Welcome on board. Thanks, Chase. Um, oh, and you've written a whole lot of stuff. And what you're saying in a summary is, yeah, foreshortening and angles, three quarter angles, dynamic images and poses. So, yeah, more stuff for tutorials for the future. You are correct. And I will be doing some foreshortening. I think we need to do some of that whole top down bottom up 
foreshortening stuff that you see in a lot of things, that's probably where we're going to have to go. Okay, I'm going to have to actually pay attention here and try to draw not a good picture because that's not in me at the moment, but maybe like something that's passable instead of just some sketchy sketches, just to see if I can. So character up here, like so, like this, but then maybe it's going to go side on, but the angle's going to be really low that we're looking at, so it's a little bit look up. Almost three quarter looks up, you might say, good sir. Let's get that in bar, and then hips round jaw. Bit of a bum, might as well give us some, why not? I get to draw it. And then legs coming off like so, as such. Shoulder circle goes here, arm comes down here, another shoulder. Maybe it then goes back up again. Still looking from the underside, side of the hand. Fingers will curl around, thumb will be in, but it means that we can draw the gun vaguely like this. It will dominate that particular space. And then we'll get this arm bracket in. Okay, yeah, we'll get something in um, working off the back of this. Kirito Uchiha. Wow. Two disinteresting characters from two very popular animations, all in one name. Can you do Mumei Echi style with her armpit showing pose? Oh, uh, I don't know if I want to. Canberry of the Iron Fortress. Love your art. Cheers, dude. Don't really know if I want to do an arm pity special. That's not really my vibe. Bakina Petkova says, well, I'm impressed. It was in Czech, but it's almost like R, so I understand. Thank you. Yes. I don't know what happened to your two separate countries after the Velvet Divorce, but I hope you're doing very well in all of them. Moon Lily says, Mickey, you should do a panties tutorial. It's Mikey, but thanks a lot. Um, when air's coming up from the bottom, like a skirt flies up. Yeah, for some of the future. Little Bacchus, non-art question. How far could you throw a tea bag into a cup? Uh, I don't know, mate, but you've definitely decided what I'm going to be doing after I record this episode. Some long-range fucking tea bagging. Oh shit, that sounds like a really intense sexual technique. Long range teabagging where like she's asleep and unaware of it, lying in a field enjoying the sun and you've parachuted in, balls out, and then you just drop right down. Maybe, something like that. Joel says Pinterest, it'd be better if people actually create oh credited artists and didn't steal their art all the time. Armor is awesome, super detailed shoulder plates and blah blah blah. Yes! So on Pinterest, yeah, this is a true thing, is you see loads of amazing art on there. But I think Pinterest gets filled up from wherever you get art from various websites. So it never really leads back to the artist that did the picture. That's very, very true. Always leads to some random blog where somebody's stolen it. Um, but eventually you do kind of find it. I think it's really good for getting... Actually, maybe Pinterest isn't the best place as an artist to get your art out there. But it's certainly an amazing place to collect art and pictures and put them in galleries of your own. Bloody love a bit of Pinterest. But yeah, like um, crediting artists is like a real like challenging thing like a lot of people don't do it you really should do it a lot of people get lazy like i've drawn pictures that i've seen before based off other artists ideas and just not credited them and it looks really bad like i'm actually passing off my own and then somebody's just like oh that reminds me of this and i get really guilty so then i have to put loads of links to the original artist it happens to all of us but yeah like crediting artists definitely important peyton sand says watching this at 10 p.m when you want to sleep isn't a great idea no it's not but when you start a mikey episode you gotta finish it that's classic hardcore crew talking right there. Um, loads of other stuff said by Joel. Don't you worry, I have read it. So, yeah, also. Um... <laughs> yeah, I'm not reading that. It's fine. But <laughs> let's take a look later. I will check that manga out. Juan says, oh man, you must watch Stein's Gate. Yeah, so we're talking about this last episode. Although at the beginning, you might find it a bit slow. I will give it a go. Don't you worry. We were talking about that a while ago. Matthew Munoz, hello, welcome again, sir. Can you draw with your left hand? Oh, God. Fuck it, hell. You know what? I don't think I can. Maybe we'll make that a challenge sometime if other people... Actually, there's probably loads of art challenges where people have done that. But that's a great question. Can any of you draw with your left hands? I mean, not if you're left-handed, obviously. I mean, if you're right-handed, can you draw with your non-dominant hand? Or are you ambidextrous at drawing? Which I hear, if you're ambidextrous, you're like, you can use both hands. Like, genuine generally you're kind of less good with either of them apparently yeah it's a bit of science for you there so yeah give that a go draw a picture of your right a really simple one try to recreate it with your left and when you're done hating yourself forever then you can go and kill yourself because it's one of the worst things to do okay so this gun shape comes up here that's the bottom bit then we've got that black curves round the front zone which is kind of like that a little bit and then that means that the circle majigamy jigs kind of around here. I don't really know what it does, but it's obviously got some cool function. 
and then the top of the gun goes round and var, and then it comes up round R. Lovely. Really rough, really sketchy, but it's vaguely trying to indicate something. Oh, there's quite a few comments, and we're getting really long again. I'm going to have to just crack through before you time lapse. Spicy Meatball, do you film these videos the same day as you upload them? Well, I think we know the answer by now. No. Um, mostly I do it on a Tuesday because I'm very last minute, and in a perfect world, I try to get them done on a Sunday. So there you go, insightful. Because rendering and uploading takes so long, and I can only do it when I'm not at work. But they would never be out on a Wednesday if I tried also drawing on a Wednesday. It just wouldn't happen. Um... What's going on? Trillian says, well, another great video. Cheers, Trillian. Help me improve my art. It's always a pleasure to help. Dementor Equilibrium. Usually draw right after school. Yeah, I like to draw straight after work or if I wake up really in the mo really early in the mornings and I'm not in the mood to do loads of like exercise, although I must do more of that. But I like to get a bit of drawing in there as well. Basically, if I didn't have a job, I'd draw more. But when you've got a day job, you have to fit it in when you can. Zappy Zor, love your art. Love your face. Can you do a robot mech cyborg tutorial? Yes, I will. And one day we're going to have to do the Major from Ghost in the Shell on an SAS. It's only a matter of time because I love her as a character from the films. From the films, I say. Brandon Flores, Mikey, Valkyrie Drive, Mermaid is Valkyrie Drive. Just saying. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, by the way, I watched an episode of that. Actually, I should say I watched the beginning half of an episode of that because I was like, wow, that looks really exciting. Maybe I'll do an SAS and I'll watch it. And so within like a few minutes, like the characters are um like fingering each other and then that's how they get their special powers and that's when i realized you hadn't linked me to like a kosher anime it was not quite hentai not quite etchy kind of stuff and i turned it off after that because that wasn't my vibe so i was like wow i should do a sexy version of this and then i watched it and i was like oh i see this is pretty much almost porn anyway i don't i don't need to do an sas of that because like, you get an eyeful just by watching the standard episode. <coughs> so I left that be in the end. But it did look really good. No, it didn't. Azuela Ivari says, Hey, Mikey, I'll finally post it on Facebook. This is in reference to your Mikey Mega Megami gender swap picture of me, which is really fucking awesome, by the way. I um, saw it on Twitter just the other day. I think I've responded or shared it accordingly. So go check that out. It's, it's quite something. So yeah, gender swap Mikey. That's a thing that some of you people do now. Good for you. But yeah, many thanks. I really like the art. It's really cool, I guess. And um, watch Mushishi for the visuals and the philosophical stories and the aria for the animation. Mushishi, I know. I've not watched all of it, but I'm aware of it. And aria, I will have to check out. Thank you. Sage Fowler says a number of things. Mostly good tips for fluidity when inking. Have a lot of ink, mate. Keep your hand moving at all times. Don't let it pull. Don't use a scratchy pen that's running out like this one. And you'll be just fine. Okay, let's get the face up there. And now I'm going to show just a bit of this. These are like clips, like um, airline seatbelts. That's what they remind me of. Yeah, and I guess that goes with her RAF vibe. Oh, I see what they've done now. Ooh, the designers of the game have done so well and kept a really consistent line of imagery that goes through the whole character. Everything takes you back to the RAF in the old school days. Yeah, well done, designers. Well done, you. Don't know why I did that. Link Vasquez says, Hey, Mikey, I graduated high school. Congratulations for graduating. And you only did it, oh, you only had to reset your exams five years in a row. You're now 24. Good for you, Link. Well done. Tim, now you got damn business. Uh, that looks badass. Cheers, sir. Oh, yeah, I just read your comment or replied to your message the other day on uh, my Facebook page. Yeah, get on Facebook if you want to send me your art. But um, I am not kidding when I say it takes me months until I actually get around to it. Like, it's a very low response time on there. Newbie Warrior says, hey, Mikey. Hey, newbie. Just wondering, what is that pen you used to sketch with? What a good question. It's a Uniball Eye Fineliner by Mitsubishi Pencil Company Limited. Uniball, basically. Um, they're gel pens. They're not super cheap. They're not super expensive. So you can buy like one every like a few months or something like that and run it out and buy another one. So good. There we go. And that's it with your comments, everybody, for this particular episode. We've made our way through. If you've commented and I've not read it, I do apologize. But I'm pretty sure I got them all because I've reorganized the comment section to be like by newest first. So then it shows everything in some sort of order one would hope but if not just simply repeat what you've got to say next time round, and we'll have a bloody good read this episode has been oh god overly long again we need to drop into time lapse i need to play around with this tracer character and i will see you delicious people right at the end <laughs>
Okay guys, and there we go. So just playing around with a couple images, trying to get used to what she's about with that weird hair. I'm probably going to draw quite a few more of these um, over the week to get into the vibe of it. But thank you very much, you lovely people at home, for watching along this far. It is always a pleasure having you along. Get yourself in the comments below if you've got something to say about art or anything and stuff and ting. And I will do my best to answer it and draw really badly next week around. Peace and love, everybody. Take care.